Hi, welcome to Top Farmers Know How. I'm Amanda. In this video, we'll talk about how to provide calves with enough good quality colostrum to help keep them from getting scours. A calf gets scours when it accidentally ingests more scours causing bacteria, viruses, or parasites than its immune system can handle. A newborn calf's immune system is immature, so calves are extremely vulnerable to these pathogens. They rely on immune proteins and colostrum for protection while their own immune system matures. But about a third of calves in New Zealand don't get enough good quality colostrum as newborns, and this is an underlying cause of most scours outbreaks. You can figure out how well your farm is doing at managing colostrum by asking your vet to blood test 12 healthy two to seven day old calves. So how does colostrum protect calves? Well, the major immune proteins in colostrum are called antibodies. Antibodies physically bind to pathogens, which helps keep them from infecting the calf. The shape of each antibody is specific to the shape of whatever it fights. For example, rotavirus antibodies only bind to rotaviruses, and salmonella antibodies only fight particular types of salmonella bacteria. Natural exposure to and vaccination against a pathogen can both stimulate a cow's immune system to make specific antibodies, which she can then secrete from her blood into her colostrum. After drinking colostrum, a newborn calf can absorb the antibodies directly from its gut into its bloodstream. The antibodies circulate in the calf for weeks to months while its own immune system matures. So, for colostrum to provide long-term protection to a calf, enough of it, containing enough of the right antibodies, needs to be fed as soon as possible after birth. A good way to remember these colostrum management guidelines is to think of the three cues. Quickly, quantity, quality. Here's some more information about each. Quickly. A newborn calf's gut allows about 30% of the antibodies in colostrum to pass into the calf's bloodstream. But by 12 hours old, the calf can only absorb about 5% of the antibodies in colostrum. And by 24 hours old, it can't absorb any at all. This change is called gut closure. Long-term protection from antibodies circulating in the calf's blood is only achieved if enough colostrum is fed quickly, in the first 12 hours of life. After gut closure, antibodies the calf drinks provide short-term defense against pathogens inside the calf's gut, but then they'll be digested. You can make sure calves get colostrum quickly by picking them up from the paddock twice a day or more during bad weather. Bottle feed or tube every calf as soon as possible after pickup. If a new calf won't drink from a bottle, then unless you're sure it's already very full from drinking from its mother in the paddock, it's better to tube it straight away than to wait until the next feeding. Every hour counts when it comes to feeding colostrum. Quantity. To get enough antibodies into its blood, a calf needs to drink 10 to 15% of its body weight in decent quality colostrum before its gut closes. For most calves, that means four to six liters. You can bottle feed or tube feed calves to get enough colostrum into them. Ideally, this should be delivered in two feeds a few hours apart, but if necessary, most calves can safely be tubed three to four liters of clean colostrum at once. About half of calves won't get enough colostrum if they're left in the calving paddock with their mother for the first 24 hours of life. Ensuring calves get enough colostrum right away doesn't just help them stay healthy in the calf shed. It actually influences their health and productivity all the way into their adult life. For example, a 2005 case study demonstrated that calves which received four liters of colostrum at birth gained 230 grams per day more live weight, had 40% fewer veterinary costs, and yielded 9 to 13% more milk in their first lactation than calves which received two liters. Quality. Two factors determine colostrum quality, how clean it is and how many antibodies it contains. The cleanliness of colostrum is important because bacteria can interfere with the calf's ability to absorb antibodies, and they might make the calf sick before the antibodies have had a chance to work. Check out our other Top Farmers video on calf hygiene for tips about keeping colostrum and calf milk as clean as possible. To get the most antibodies as possible into calves before their gut closes, only feed newborns the highest antibody colostrum you've got. This will be from the first milking, the gold colostrum, since antibody levels drop at each milking. To highlight the difference in quality between first milking and later milkings, it can be helpful to call milk from the second and later milkings transition milk and to call first milking colostrum gold colostrum. This can make it clear that newborns should only receive colostrum from the first milking. 
But since even this gold colostrum varies in quality, it can also be helpful to use a small piece of equipment called a BRICS refractometer to measure antibodies. Good colostrum measures 22% or more on BRICS and contains the most antibodies. Fair colostrum measures 19 to 22% and poor colostrum measures less than 19%. The amount of antibodies in colostrum is influenced by the way cows are managed before and after calving. Here are a few examples. Milking a cow right after calving will give you better colostrum than milking her 12 hours later. Cows which are well fed before and after calving make better colostrum than poorly fed animals. Lastly, the colostrum from animals vaccinated with Scour's vaccines, such as Rotovet Corona, contains more antibodies than colostrum from unvaccinated cows. You can improve colostrum quality by managing the springers and colostrum cows with all of these factors in mind. If you have enough good gold colostrum for newborns, feed your fair and poor quality gold colostrum and all your transition milk to older calves. It's still a great source of nutrition and it provides some short-term protection against scours causing pathogens at the gut level. If you have to feed poorer quality colostrum or transition milk to newborns, they'll need more of it fed sooner to get the same protection as they would get from colostrum with a higher BRICS reading. The logistics of colostrum management can be difficult when you have dozens of cows calving every day. Everybody on the farm has to work together to make sure every calf gets their four to six liters of good quality clean colostrum as soon as possible after birth. This may mean changing the way you manage springers or colostrum cows, adding extra calf pickups, or training additional people to feed and tube calves. But keeping the three cues of colostrum management in mind and spending extra time and effort on newborns will help prevent headaches in the calf shed this season and will pay you dividends in the long run. Setting calves off on the right foot is well worth the effort. <laughs>